Hello and welcome. Today's webinar is Radar Point Cloud Segmentation Using Gaussian Mixture Model in Traffic Monitoring. My name is Brendan Williams. I am the Research Program Administrator at Portland State University's Transportation Research and Education Center. TREK leads the National Institute for Transportation and Communities, a university transportation center funded by the US Department of Transportation. NITSI consortium members are the University of Utah, University of Oregon, University of Arizona, University of Texas at Arlington, and the Oregon Institute of Technology. NITSI's research priority is improving mobility of people and goods to build strong communities. Our presenter today is Dr. Siang Kao from the University of Arizona. Siang is an assistant professor of electrical and computer engineering. His research focuses on the areas of radar signal processing, electronically scanned radar systems, radar imaging and machine learning, with an emphasis on radar applications. I uh, just want to promote, we have a couple of upcoming events. Uh, this Friday, November 12th, from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Pacific time, Trek is hosting a Friday transportation seminar on vehicular design and resource allocation policies for equitable road safety. And that will be presented by Dr. Alyssa Ryan from the University of Arizona. And on November 19th, from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Pacific time, Trek is hosting another Friday transportation seminar on the urban freight system and its supporting infrastructure. And that's presented by Gabriela Giron from Portland Bureau of Transportation. Okay, so this presentation by Siang will be about 40 minutes long, then we'll have about 15 minutes to answer your questions. Um, during his presentation, please feel free to put your questions into the, the Q&A feature of Zoom. Um, that makes it easier for us to handle than the chat. Uh, but yeah, um, we're looking forward to answering any questions you have. Um, so please contribute those. Um, after the webinar, you will receive an email with the link to the video recording and presentation slides. Um, if you are tracking professional development hours, this webinar is eligible for one hour of continuing education credit. Instructions on how to redeem the credit will be included in your post-webinar email. Um, I'd also like to mention that uh, we have a survey and uh, the comments and feedback on the survey are, are very much appreciated by our staff. Um, and all right, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Xiang. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Brandon's introduction. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay. okay. Uh, today, I'm going to present radar point cloud segmentation using Gaussian mix model in traffic monitoring. Uh, this was a project supported by National Institute for Transportation and Communities, NITC, as well as City of Tucson Department of Transportation. Uh, this work is done by uh, my PhD student, Dr. Fen Jin, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the support of Dr. Wu. And first, we, uh, we probably have a, a short coverage of uh, a general introduction for radar so that help everyone to warm up. And then we're going to go through the introduction of the multi-model traffic monitoring, some literature, literature review, uh, our proposed solution and the experiment setup and why it leads us to the point cloud segmentation and some future work. And if we have time, we'll probably discuss a little bit of another related work here at uh, University of Arizona. Uh, first is about radar. Uh, radar is, uh, before radar was invented, uh, it, it, people was using acoustic device to detect object. Uh, it, this is a picture take, taken during World War 
World War I, and uh, uh, people is using the acoustic device to find out if there's some air attacks. And uh, what radar do is that a radar can generate a signal, uh, and through the antenna, it will send out the electronic, uh, it, it will send out the radio frequency signal out. When it hits to target, part of the energy goes back to the antenna, and radar will collect that signal and do the signal processing. Uh, radar basically measures three things. Uh, one thing is distance. According to the time delay uh, from the transmit signal to the receive signal, it can compute the time delay and translate that time delay into, into, the, into the distance of the object, or we call it range, uh, by using the speed of the light. Uh, and also, it can uh, find out the direction of the target uh, because the antenna typically have a direction. Uh, uh, it can be mechanic, uh, it can be mechanical rotating antenna, or it can be electronic rotating antenna. Uh, and also, by observing the target for uh, a period of time, uh, the distance, uh, the, the, dis the distance can translate into the speed of the object. So basically, three things: the speed the speed of the object, the distance or range of the object, and also the angle of the object. So this is an early application of using radar to find out the, uh, finding out the distance. Uh, it, it was finding out the height of ionosphere. So we can send one transmit signal. Uh, we can have a transmitter and a receiver separately. And the transmit signal will send to two directions. One is directly to the receiver, and other one is toward ionosphere and bounce back to receiver. So the receiver will receive two signals and compare the time difference between the, signal, the two signals, it can compute T. And with the speed of light and, and this T uh, in, in very early stage, uh, 1925, we can find out the height of the ionosphere. Basically, we use the, we use the echo time to find out the distance of the object. And this one is the display, a typical display of radar system. And we can measure the distance of the object. We can find out the bearing angle, uh, or basically uh, azimuth angle and elevation angle of the object. So we can determine the three-dimensional location of the points radar pick up. Uh, and also radar can find out the speed of each point uh, relatively stably. And one thing, uh, uh, and about the antenna, uh, radar can generate a very sharp beam uh, and steering the space to find out the direction of the object. The beam is dependent uh, on the wavelength, the central frequency of the radar system, as well as the size of the antenna. So if the, if the, so typically if we have a radar system working on a higher frequency, uh, the wavelength will be smaller. So that the, if we keep the same size of the antenna, the beam will become narrower. So it will be easier to separate object in angle. Uh, and also if we are moving into a higher frequency, uh, we can allow for more bandwidth signal to be transmitted. So more bandwidth signal can also give us higher resolution in range. Uh, so this one is a, a, a radar working on different frequency. We can tell if it's on a lower frequency, it can detect long distance object, but maybe without very clear, uh, with, without very clear separation to see the details of object. When it's moving to a higher frequency, uh, for example, the 77 gigahertz we are using in this application, uh, radar can have good resolution. Uh, to determine that this to separate distance, separate angle, but it cannot, uh, uh, but it, it may not transmit that long distance for, uh, for very long distance object. Okay, uh, the next is the concept of multi model traffic monitoring. Uh, the concept of uh, multi model traffic monitoring is it can, is that we are placing some traffic monitoring system. In the intersection, and we think this uh, this system can provide us information to separate object, and also determine if it's a vehicle or it's pedestrian or bicycle. So hopefully, uh, it can provide real time 
uh, traffic statistic, including the speed, uh, the, 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 the model of the traffic, uh, for the model for each of the traffic, and it can separate. The goal is that with this, uh, the goal is that with, with this information, we hope uh, it can improve the traffic efficiency and also reduce the incidents and crashes. The application of multi-model traffic monitoring is that uh, it, it can, for example, provide traveler information system uh, for traveler, let them know what's happening. And it can also imp improve the safety uh, to support traffic system. So, so the information can come from infrastructure. So we're setting out the multi-model traffic monitoring system and uh, we'll call can have an onboard unit trying to receive the information generated by the multimodal traffic monitoring. And this information hopefully can help driver uh, to, uh, to make better judgment and avoid some, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to avoid some of the crashes to basically improve the safety. Uh, the key problem in multimodal traffic is that we want to find out the speed and the volume of each traffic mod. Uh, so, it, so we, we are going to have several tasks here typically. For example, we need to detect the dynamic object and we need to track the object and classify the object. In the end is that we can determine the speed of the object. Uh, and hopefully this traffic, uh, traffic monitoring system can also be robust to adverse light and weather, and it will be low cost uh, or, and also low power consumption. So in the first uh, four tasks, detection, tracking, classification, measuring speed, uh, we, we, can, we probably need to think about what's the sensor we can use. And, uh, and according to the sensor, uh, according to the sensor we have, we can try to determine uh, if it's it's, it's robust to the adverse weather and if it's low cost and low, low power consumptions. And also we need to figure out what's the algorithm uh, going inside. So typically a sensor, there are three sensors can do this task. One is camera, another is LIDAR, and the third is radar. Camera typically have a higher resolution imaging in two dimensional space. And the LiDAR can have a dense point cloud data. The radar received data will be point cloud uh, with some velocity information. So you can tell for camera here, typically we have the X, Y coordinate or, or pixel index, and as well as the RGB intensity corresponding to each pixel. And for LiDAR, LiDAR can provide three-dimensional three point information uh, and as well as the intensity. Uh, for radar, radar can measure the range, azimuth direction, elevation direction. Uh, basically, this three information can give us the three-dimensional precision for each point. Uh, and also radar, uh, different from another two sensor, radar can provide relatively a stable radio velocity, uh, which will be very helpful for us to determine the speed of, of vehicles. And also the intensity a radar can also provide. Uh, but you can tell, but you can tell for, for camera, we can see targets more clearly. Uh, when it goes to LIDAR, uh, probably it becomes, even though it's three dimensional, the points will be less. When we move into radar, uh, typically the points will be much less than camera and LIDAR. Later, we are going to see some of the data we collected during experiment. And the next is we want to find out if we are using each sensor, uh, I mean, camera, LIDAR, or radar, uh, how can the sensor do detection, tracking, classification, and measure the speed. Uh, for detection using radar, uh, uh, for detection using camera, we may go through a background subtraction, uh, basically trying to separate the object from the uh, from the ground. And today, there's also uh, some deep learning technology can be applied on the segmentation task. 
uh, for tracking, uh, there are different tracker we can use. And very popular is still the extended common filter. Common filter is using quite often in tracking, uh, creating trackers. Uh, for classification, there are two types of classification. One is unsupervised, uh, for example, support vector machine, or it can be supervised. Uh, basically, unsupervised is the a machine learning method we do not need label. Uh, but supervise, we need a label. At least we need to know a ground truth uh, for the received data to say whether this is a vehicle or it's a pedestrian and so forth so on. And the camera actually can also measure the speed. It will use the frame difference to measure the speed. Mm. But it, uh, it, it needs a little bit additional effort uh, in signal processing. In terms of detection, uh, in terms of LIDAR, LIDAR can provide detection from camera. For example, uh, this paper was trying to use camera generating a, a, generating a two-dimensional box, and, and further it will project into a three-dimensional bounding box. And, uh, and, and the LIDAR data can be associated into that bounding box to finding out, to make a detection of the object. And as well as we can do tracking, uh, tracking is that uh, we can apply a common filter uh, for, for LIDAR data also. For classification today, this point net can be used uh, for LIDAR data to classify object. And also it can use frame difference to measure the, uh, to measure the speed. Uh, for the radar approach, radar approach can do detection uh, by using moving target indicator so that it can separate the moving target from the static uh, target. So uh, it, can, uh, it can make sure that we only receive the moving targets information. Uh, and also uh, radar can apply some uh, clustering method to separate the points into different, uh, different, 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 different classes. So that later we can apply the tracking algorithm to check the object and also classify the object using Doppler effect. There are multiple ways for uh, classification for radar uh, separate object. Uh, straightforward, we can use Doppler effect. And actually we can also take the advantage of the, uh, of the uh, we can also take the advantage of the point cloud uh, using its spatial information, uh, the range and the, uh, the range and angle uh, in classification. For speed measurement, radar is quite straightforward because for each point, radar already have, have the uh, Doppler information, so it should be able to measure the, the speed of the object by default. So if we compare the three sensors, uh, we can see a uh, camera typically has the best detection because camera can see more points uh, and it's more clear. Uh, for LiDAR, LiDAR is a little bit worse compared with camera in terms of resolution. Uh, radar is the worst in, in finding out the points because radar's resolution is not as good as the previous two, but radar can have a good dynamic object detection. Basically, it can separate moving target from the static ground. And another one is tracking. Uh, uh, radar since already have the bad, uh, have a good velocity measurement, so makes the tracking uh, better than the camera and the LiDAR. In terms of classification, it's similar. Uh, if we have more information of one object, we see it more clearly. Typically, we have a better classification. And for measuring speed, radar is the best. Uh, 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 camera is the worst, uh, and the robustness is uh, because radar working on lower frequency compared with the light, so it's more stable uh, under adverse weather and light condition. In terms of cost, uh, uh, radar is about the medium, and the lidar currently is the highest one, and the uh, camera is the uh, is is the cheapest one. So in this work. Uh, we are more focused on improving the classification for radar so that make radar uh, more suitable for uh, a traffic application for finding out the different uh, uh, to, to classify the 
uh, the different traffic mode. So our proposed solution is that we are going to put a millimeter wave radar sensor here in the traffic section sec uh, in the traffic intersection and using the dynamic object detection uh, and tracking and measurement plus deep learning uh, deep learning approach so that we can classify the transportation models uh, so radar uh, we are working on 77 gigahertz radar, which uh, size is small, so it can integrate more channel for higher angular, angular resolution. Uh, the bandwidth, uh, uh, and also uh, because uh, it work on relative bandwidth, so the radar will also have a higher resolution comparing with the 24 gigahertz radar. So this has difference, for example, if it's 24 gigahertz radar with 300 megahertz bandwidth, uh, you can tell the points is relatively less than the 77 gigahertz one. In this application, we are working on 77 gigahertz with uh, about four gigahertz bandwidth. So next is how millimeter wave radar millimeter wave FMCW radar works. Uh, the radar is working in this way. Uh, it will send the LFM signal, which is increasing its frequency over time linearly. So uh, we can generate this waveform. And when we hit the target, we are going to receive the IX signal from the target. And according to the time delay, we can determine the distance of the object. And this this time delay actually can be compiled by the frequency difference between the transmit signal and the receive signal, which is FR. So FR will basically equal to tau times the slope of the LFM signal. Uh, so with so if we receive the signal, we can do a simply uh, after we beat the frequency, we find out the uh, uh, finding out the range. Uh, we, we can simply do a Fourier transform to determine uh, the, the, the distance of the object. If we trans transmit multiple pulses, uh, if the target is moving, uh, it may cause a little bit uh, a phase change from pulse to pulse. And with this phase change over time, uh, according to multiple pulses, we can determine uh, the, the Doppler frequency of the received signal uh, for particular objects. So the Doppler frequency can translate into the speed of the object. And we may also have multiple channels. The multiple channels can give us uh, different spatial samples. And uh, using the spatial sample, we can determine the angle of the object. So that we are going to have the uh, range, the speed, and also the angle of the object. So this one is the data cube uh, we received. So after, after the three FFD, uh, three dimensional Fourier transform, uh, we can find out the range, the angle, the Doppler information and each point's intensity. Uh, and we can pass through a detection process uh, trying to also trying to classify the points. And with classification, we can try to track the points, the centroid of the points. And with, uh, with the tracking, we can, we can accumulate multiple frames to determine what the object is. And some of the past work we have been done uh, is trying to detect the behavior of patient. So this one, we just used uh, the Doppler information uh, for, for this person, and we can try to find out whether he is walking or falling. Uh, so similarly, uh, we can apply the, the Doppler information uh, uh, by using, by building some uh, neural network. Uh, and with training, we can determine what the object is whether it's a vehicle or it's a pedestrian or it's a bicycle. So this one is, uh, we have the camera view of the reference and uh, it, we can collect the Doppler pattern of the object, uh, of, the, of, of the person. And then this Doppler, uh, this micro Doppler pattern 
uh, can be generated. And then we go through deep learning process trying to find out object, what it is. So what we do here is that we have a detection process so that uh, we can find out the points. Uh, with these points, uh, we can generate the pattern. With these points over time, we can have the Doppler effect. We can have the pattern. And with this pattern, we go through a machine learning process. Uh, it can be a neural network uh, or some other format. Uh, and then with some training, we can determine uh, what the object is. So next is the experiment setup we have. Uh, for doing this experiment, we have uh, automotive radar. Uh, this one is, uh, uh, oh, sorry. First is the USB camera. This one is helping us to collect uh, some visual uh, background of what is happening. And we also we have the millimeter wave radar. Uh, this one is uh, TIAWR1843. Uh, uh, that's a, that, a TI77 gigahertz radar. And also we have the data processing unit trying to collect the data to the signal processing. Uh, and some uh, th this one typically we collect the data in the laptop and uh, uh, the data processing unit is, is for transmission data. And we do post processing in the computer. And this is some data we collected. We basically collect uh, fence movement. Fence was moving from uh, from here, go get, goes back. And you can tell for radar point, it's not very stable like the camera and the LIDAR. Basically, uh, the point have some distribution when we're collecting. So uh, we can imagine in this way, uh, sometimes the electronic wave uh, hit the, the, the arm bow more or sometimes hit the, hit the leg more. So the reflex signal is not very stable, but accumulate multiple frames, it will be easier for classified object. And this one is we, collect, we collected for two person. You can, we, we can tell the, 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 uh, the, the clustering may not be very good, which means that Sometimes the points, sometimes it's not very good in determining if it's belong, the point is belong to person A or, or person B. And so that, that's, uh, that's because we are using some, uh, in this example, we are using some built-in clustering method uh, by, by, the, by, the, by, the, by, by the TI spot. So, so in this work, we find out, okay, another one is the, is the whale call. We can tell sometimes the clustering method also make a mistake. For example, in the beginning, it's this color. In the end, I it think it's three objects. So we, we find out actually uh, the, the person and the car will have different distribution uh, when it is uh, when we're getting the points. Uh, so the task is that we want to first able to be clustering the two objects. We can find out which points is belong to which object uh, so that it will be very helpful uh, in later when we are trying to do the class, uh, when we're doing the, doing the classifications. Uh, so the assumption for us is that we think different traffic model probably will have a certain uh, multi-variable Gaussian distribution. And that's the reason we are going to do the point cloud segmentation uh, in this work. Uh, so the point, uh, the, the class uh, actually, uh, uh, what we do is that we are doing a Gaussian mixed model classification. It's coming, uh, it's, it's, it, the idea actually is close to the k-means. Uh, k-means is one algorithm trying to classify the, uh, trying to 
as, uh, to classify the points. For example, here we have uh, three cluster of points, and uh, in and we we have two things unknown. Uh, we do not know uh, which class these points is belong to, and we also don't know what's the mean for uh, what's the mean for the cluster. So if we know or what's the uh, if we, we know either of the cases, for example, if we, we know the membership, we know which point, uh, which cluster each point is belong to, so that we should be able to determine uh, the mean, the, the points average. If we know the points average, according to the average, we should be able to find out the point is belong to which cluster. So basically that's a chicken and egg problem. Uh, so the k-mean algorithm is trying to randomly do some guess. For example, it can guess that we we know the point is belong to some cluster. For example, in the beginning, it just assumes some of point belong to this uh, to cluster one, some point to cluster two, some point to cluster three, and then uh, according to it, it can trying to find out finding out the centroid, find out the average of it. Then according to the average. Uh, or centroid of it, it can find out. Uh, it, it can find out the points is belong to which clustering, so that it back and forth do the loop, do the iteration, so that it can gradually find out the object, separate object into different clusters. However, this k-mean is not appropriate uh, for the uh, for the radar data because. Uh, K-mean typically required the points to have some uh, equal density distribution. So, but if we go back to see the data we collect here, you can tell uh, the the person and the the, the vehicle have quite different uh, distributions. So we need to figure out a different way for doing it. So a, tip, a typical way for fitting uh, a probability mixing model is that uh, we, we can use a, a, a EM algorithm. So the EM algorithm will be very similar like the k-mean. Instead of k-mean is just trying to find out the centroid, uh, the, uh, the, the EM algorithm can find out the, uh, uh, can find out the, uh, the different distribution and trying to fill in the distributions, uh, trying to fill in the distributions uh, parameters. So for the radar point cloud, we think it's, it's more like a Gaussian distribution for different objects. So here we are extracting some information we need. Uh, for example, we want to know that we have the range, uh, the azimuth elevation angle, the speed, signal to noise ratio and the noise. So that um, according to the cluster, uh, we can find out the centroid of the data. And according to the centroid of data uh, and the points, we can find out uh, the, the delta x, delta y, delta z of the, of the object, of, of the point we receive. And also finding out the variation of the Doppler variation of the RCS. So we are going to have a feature vector. The feature vector have the uh, have the variation of x, variation of y, z, and delta t. And we are making an assumption. We think that we are trying to use a Gaussian model to fit it. So assuming if the object is belong to, uh, if, if the point is object, say type one, for example, is pedestrian. So we think the pedestrian will have a specific distribution. Uh, the, the Gaussian distribution have this uh, average and covariance matrix. And the Gaussian mixed model, uh, as long as we have the prior probability, which is CK, uh, and then we have the assumptions, we should be able to find out the Gaussian mixed model. And then we are going to use the posterior probability uh, and then we can use the posterior probability to, to determine if we have a points going in, whether it's class number one or class number two, and so forth, so on. So here we have some unknowns. 
we do not know the prior and we do not know the Gaussian statistic of each classes. So basically we need to measure, we need to find out the Gaussian distribution so that we can determine the prior. If we know the prior, we can go back to determine the Gaussian statistic. So here we think about EM algorithm so that it can help us to find out the class of the object. So uh, the, the EM algorithm doing is that uh, it have a uh, different distribution uh, and also models parameters. So if models parameter is fixed, it can determine whether uh, the point is belong to which class. And whether when, when, the, uh, when we guess a distribution, uh, which means we, we already guess the, uh, the points belong to which class, we can try to determine uh, which uh, we can help to find to measure the parameters of the Gaussian model. So basically, that's also a chicken and egg problem. Assume in the beginning we do some guess, and then we can have the parameters. And with parameters, we can determine uh, we can determine uh, points belong to which class. And with with we know points is with onto which class, and we can determine. Uh, uh, and we can determine the distribution again. So for so on until it works. So this one is one EM algorithms illustration. So we have a point, we firstly assume some centroid here uh, or, or assume some Gaussian distribution here so that the point may be separate into these two classes. And then we do one iteration, it goes to here, two iteration, three, a five iteration, 20 iterations until it converges. So what we have is that we have some training data. So we have one car driving randomly and one person walking randomly. So we collect the 8,000 random radar frames and we do not have the labeling data uh, because GMM is unsupervised part. And then we also have some testing data. Testing data have a lot of radar frames and let the person walk on the left and let the vehicle uh, drive on the, on the right so that we can have some ground truths to separate the uh, uh, separate object, a separate to separate the uh, to separate the, the object. So the, the experiment procedure is we first apply the Gaussian, uh, uh, Gaussian mix model on the training data so that we can generate the distribution. Uh, and then we use that distribution, we save the Gaussian mix, mix model and apply on the testing data. We want to see if it works well in separating the objects. And we compute and do the performance uh, measurement. And these are the experiment outcome. Uh, so we have one uh, pedestrian on the left and one vehicle on the right. And the, the red one are the clouders. So the right one is the ground truth. You can tell uh, it will improve the, it will, uh, uh, it will input the result a little bit so that we can separate the human being and the car by segmentation. Uh, so we also have this uh, confusion matrix uh, because we just have two objects. Uh, so we want to find out if it's working reliably. So uh, it tells, it can basically detect the pedestrian relatively good. And uh, sometimes it still have some error on cars and, uh, uh, and it can detect louder good. Uh, and we, we think we can have some further uh, computation, for example, RANSAP to further improve it. But I think this, uh, but we think this uh, Gaussian model can help us uh, to segment the data and uh, get uh, get some pre-processed pre data so we can feed the into the into the signal processing chain in the future steps. 
uh, we actually uh, this 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 work is uh, posted on GitHub, and we have maintained a web page on GitHub uh, to share the data we collected. And uh, this one is the link. And we also collect the data in the traffic intersection at universe close to University of Arizona. Uh, and actually, we're also doing some uh, some additional study because we find out that maybe a single sensor uh, is uh, maybe radar itself can do something good, and radar itself, uh, camera itself can do something uh, something good, but it also has some disadvantages. So what we do is that we are trying to put the two sensors together. Uh, this one is one example. We work on another project. So uh, these are the points. Uh, the first figure is the points, the radar receive points, and we project into the camera. And then uh, doing by using the algorithm we have, we can uh, separate the points, separate the objects, and then we can find out central of the points. And also we can have uh, cameras. Uh, camera will detect two vehicles. Uh, camera right now have some algorithm, for example, Yulo uh, can do the task. It can frame by frame trying to find out the object and uh, and then we can find out the centroid of the points. And you can tell the centroid from the camera is quite close to the centroid of the radar so that uh, it can provide a, a little bit association between the points. Uh, this project was funded by uh, the National Institute for Transportation and Communities, uh, a U US Department of Transportation University uh, a transportation center and was co-founded by city of Tucson. All right, thanks so much, Xian. Okay, thank you. Um, so I, I really did appreciate the background um, and then bring it all the way to the, the present time. Um, we have one question um, from the audience, but other other uh, audience members, please feel free to uh, submit your questions um, on this research. Um, the Q and A feature would be the easiest um, for us to handle. So the first question we have is: uh, How do you plan to address having vehicles side by side, or pedestrians side by side? Uh, I'm not quite sure. What's the side by side here means? Uh, cool. Well, I guess it's sort of like how you know you have uh, two lanes of cars, right? Um, mm -hmm. And and that's always a little bit of a danger when you're crossing the road, um, and and the cars aren't moving the same speed. And then I imagine with pedestrians, you might have them walking to walking at different speeds, um, maybe even going different directions. Uh, uh, because what what we what we do here is that we are trying to use sensor, uh, trying to classify the object and find out where the object it is. For example, here is that, uh, for example, the centroid of the object, so that we know uh, in the output we should know the bounding box, basically how big it is the object, and what's the centroid of the object, and then we can plot. Uh, we can provide that information over time by using the sensors, either radar or camera or some fusion system. And with this information, we should be able to do some prediction, uh, dynamic prediction to predict the future movement of the vehicles or pedestrians uh, and provide some alert information. I I'm not sure if that answers the question. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you're, you're getting at uh, what, what you're doing with the camera and the radar. Um, I, I guess it's just sort of, if you imagine, I mean, well, we see with your images that the radar is pointed um, uh, uh, perpendicular to the vehicle direction. If there was a car behind, let's say the white truck, um, and we have the blue dot on the white truck, um, what what does that mean for that car that might be blocked? Um, yeah, 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Brandon. Thank you for uh, for for explaining the question for me. Yes. Uh, it will be be problem if 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 some object is blocking the each other. Uh, so typically for radar, it's relatively okay that it will not block so significantly because radar can separate distance also. So it can also uh, typically one well code cannot totally block another one. And especially if we have accumulate uh, uh, the data over time, so we should be able to track the object over time. So if it's not blocking for a long time, we should be able to see the object. Great. Um, so this project, the, the partner was the city of Tucson. And I know, you know, even more specific was uh, your, your co-PI. Um, Yao Yam Wu. Um, so it, a lot of the presentation today, I feel like was very much your specialty with the yes. radar aspect. And let's say the city of Tucson is um, interested in maybe the, what you, the larger topic of um, traffic signals and improving that. Can you talk just a little bit about how you're working with the different partners and where you see your role and, and going forward? Yeah. Yes. For for me, I think my myself role is trying to extract the information more clearly, so that uh, we can have uh, real time data uh, for finding out the vehicle or the the type of the vehicle, the speed uh, in the traffic uh, in the traffic intersection. Uh, and I think Doctor Wu's work is more related to the prediction to find out the trajectory to avoid uh, some collision and also larger scale how to manage how to uh, how to plan the traffic intersection so i think that's uh, that's uh, that's different strengths here so for us we are more working on sensors so we trying to uh, extract the information as as best as we can so hopefully uh, this information can be used by uh, by by different the uh, uh, by different other groups, yeah. Can you um, just maybe, I, I don't know how much of a repeat this is, but could you talk a little bit more about um, the the challenges around the classification? I, I know that that is the, the, the main area that you presented where you're, you're really the radar you want to improve and then you see that being sort of um, the major benefit of radar is if you can improve that, it will um, really improve safety. Okay, thank you, Brandon. Thank you for your uh, for your question. Uh, so I, I think um, uh, so. Today there's some 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 difficult part for radar uh, on on this type of application. Uh, the the reason is that. Um, for for camera is fine. We can do some detection, and uh, there are already some a lot of data available trying to separate object, uh, and so there's also material algorithm on there. But for radar, we just have some very sparse points. These points we do not know whether it's belong to first object or second object, uh, and also we are. Uh, uh, we typically, uh, I know some industry company uh, trying to hire people, uh, trying to manually label the data. So labeling the data and later for some other machine learning method trying to classify objects or so on. So labeling itself is very painful here. Uh, it it takes a lot of, of, of people's effort here. So what we do is that we hopefully we are having some unsupervised measure and kind of elevate the work uh, for the others trying to classify classified points. For example, if we look at the first figure, the green points, uh, you can imagine if the two target is even a little bit more closer, it will be very difficult to separate the points. So we uh, we may rely on people to manually separate the points looking at the data, uh, or we can also apply some uh, another algorithm uh, here. Hopefully, uh, we can we can apply or we can try to separate the points. Uh, uh, by uh, separating the points automatically. So that's the work we, we have been focused on in the past. So that's it. 
Great. Yeah. Um, so I'm also thinking about um, what are you what are you looking at when when you're looking outside of your own work and uh, University of Arizona's work um, and what the city of Tucson is partnering with you? Have you seen other researchers doing um, some similar work or or vastly different work in different cities? Yes, I, I'm aware that the city of Tucson is uh, is having some camera solution, trying to do this problem, or trying to do this work, and putting in the in the intersection, trying to monitor the traffic. Uh, but the camera itself sometimes is not very stable uh, in adverse weather, uh, uh, and also uh, during the night. Uh, so I think that's the reason. Uh, uh, I think that's the reason they are also interested in the work we are currently doing. And uh, we are also working with Dr. Wu to find out if any additional uh, close to uh, application product can, can be working with them uh, in, in the future. Um, I'm, yeah, I, is there anything else you feel like um, we haven't touched on? Um. Oh yeah, uh, I, 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 yes. I, 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 what I think is that I find out uh, radar itself is becoming uh, dropping into a price uh, we can accept to have a lot of applications. Mm, so, uh, uh, for example, this one is the traffic monitoring, and actually radar can also do some imaging work uh, and trying to, for example. Uh, we can fix in the radar trying to uh, see the object more clearly uh, and uh, also there are also some other application uh, putting on to different the uh, wearable device uh, so that we can collect uh, collect some information from the carrier itself and uh, and i think there are many opportunity here uh, basically uh, we can apply the technologies yeah and I guess there, there's a, a larger societal question I'm also thinking of that uh, it seems to me that the radar is beneficial in the, where the camera isn't as far as um, suspicion, right, of yeah. um, capturing real images of people um, versus, um, you know, the what comes back through the radar, it looks, you know, it it looks like it might not differentiate between different people um, in a way that would give away uh, who they are and what they do and, and privacy concerns. Um, is that something that you've uh, had conversations on? Uh, uh, yes, I, I, yes, I also think uh, uh, there, there's, uh, I think there's no uh, a single solution. Uh, to, uh, to uh, there, there's not a fixed solution, I can say, uh, to some traffic problem. For example, the multi-model monitoring we just mentioned, or we or the no autonomous driving currently putting the sensor on the vehicle. Uh, so I think probably this is a progress. Uh, let people trying to go uh, basically do do more study and try different sensors and see whether it's appropriate to integrate, integrate the sensors. Uh, and uh, just as you said, it's also depends on the regulation and also uh, we need to pay attention to the privacy. Uh, so uh, sometimes, for example, sometimes camera cannot be used on some of the particular intersections uh, so that uh, we may have, uh, but here radar uh, can detect points, it's not as clear as, as camera. So under that applications, uh, radar can basically uh, still detecting, detecting some signal, but not providing uh, too much details. So it depends on the application uh, and what we need here. And I guess I'm also thinking like, not, I don't, I don't want to be, sort of flipping or anything, but like um, how this fits into traffic safety. So let's say we're at like Times Square in New York City. Obviously we have uh, an enormous amount of people um, walking around, but we also have cars um, taking people to different places and, and various 
reasons um, in other modes as well. So how 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 does this work in the sort of traffic signal? Like, are we going to sort of try and prevent cars? Um, I, I think I'm obviously thinking that pedestrians that walk at different speeds. Um, how how do all of those sort of characteristics um, result in a or fit into a cohesive system? So what what I think is that. Uh, let me go. Uh, sorry, we may have some uh, here, for example. Uh, I think there are multiple different things here. So basically, uh, traffic. So the, this information can be collected in the infrastructure, and actually, this uh, multi-model information can also be collected by the vehicle. And in the end, we think that this road information, sensed by the different pedestrian walking in different speed, uh, can be feeding into the vehicle in some way. Uh, in terms of the, uh, uh, I also know there's a vehicle infrastructure communication at this moment trying to building. So this information can also uh, go in into the vehicle and help the, sometimes maybe help the, uh, the driver make, make judgment or maybe uh, some active safety, trying to help the driver to avoid some of the dangerous situation. Uh, and I think that's, that's what, what may be possible. And also this infrastructure information uh, can we can also collect this information for a period of time uh, so it can also help us to do better study to find out uh, which uh, intersection should have what type of problem we can do more monitoring and avoid some future dangers that sounds great that makes a lot of sense um and and i like these the, the graphics um really show you how it how it all comes together um, so we're going to be publishing uh, the final report for this research on our uh, project website soon, um, and that'll be uh, promoted in our newsletter and on Twitter. Um, is there anything more you want to uh, say, Siang, about your this project or uh, your other projects you have? Uh, yes, I think I think that's what we did here. And uh, I also have a few slides here in case you guys are interested. We also do some imaging work, for example, uh, we mounting radar on the vehicle, trying to form the imaging of the parking vehicles. And we also do some imaging of the, say, in a lab environment to find out the, find out the balls. And we also do some classification on the, on the human being. Uh, to find out uh, what he's doing. I think it will also maybe helpful in the traffic intersection sometimes trying to monitor if uh, any people have some uh, have some concerns we need to pay attention. That's great. Um, thanks so much, Xiang. Um, and thank you audience members for coming. Um, we have Friday transportation seminars from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Uh, through track um, and we will have our next NITSI webinar in late January after the big flurry of uh, TRB um, conference and, and all of that. Um, so hope to see you at uh, some of those events and Xiang, uh, really appreciate you presenting today. Thank you. Brandon. Thank you. So take care. <laughs>